So just as an example of a power function, okay? Make me a table quickly for the functions. And just make me the table on the domain. Zero, one, half, one, two. Things are going to come out very similar to the way they do for the x squared and the x cubed function, except some of the y values are going to be a little different. Remember, don't write down anything I wrote down except write down that table. Okay, glancing around, I see a lot of calculator-induced arithmetic deficiencies. Not everybody, but most of you are having trouble doing like one half to the fourth, uh, or two to the fourth. Well, first of all, if x is zero, what's x to the fourth? But if any power of zero is going to be zero, except a negative power, which can't be because that would be a division by zero, right? Okay? Uh, and we've really got to be able to do this arithmetic and you got to know how to do powers and stuff like that. That's totally fundamental. You'll never understand power functions unless you do. So when I do an assignment, I'll make sure you explain. And that's a big thing for the rest of the course. You need to be explaining what you do. Okay? Explain what you're doing. Show me what you're doing. Don't just put down a bunch of symbols or a graph without an explanation. Okay? So, and same thing for x to the fifth. It's a positive power, so we can do that. Okay? And of course, one to the fourth means what? One times one times one times one, which is one. Okay? And one to the fifth, for similar reason, is one. Okay? Uh, now, one half to the fourth. What's one half to the fourth? How are you going to write that out? What's the fourth power of a number mean? <coughs> Multiply the number by itself, then again, then again, right? In other words, blank or got something else and didn't write this out. Um, 
right out what things mean. Okay, it's something I'm really trying to get you to do because it makes the whole course easier. Okay? Now, you've got a definition of what the fourth power means, which you've known or should have known since pre algebra. Okay? So, I'll put parentheses around there just for the of it. So, that's. This, right? And I want you to write these things out in this detail so you reinforce what it means so, you know, a couple of years down the road you don't forget what it means. Okay? Because it's always important to know these things. So that's 1 over 16. So. I don't want you to write a decimal, I want you to write 1 16th. Okay? And I want you to be able to graph 1 16th. Okay? Well, then 2 to the 4th, well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16. 1 half to the 5th is 1 over 32. 2 to the 5th is 32. Okay? So how does this compare with like x squared? If you had a table for x squared, what would be the same, what would be different, and what would be the difference? I'm going to ask you to explain this in your book. Okay. What's the difference? What's the same? What's different? Then what's that do to the graph? Okay. So what do you get? If if this was x squared, what would your four numbers here be? 0, 1, 4, 1, 4. 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, 4, 1, 4, right? <coughs> okay. Can't hear what I'm hearing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what's the same and what's different? Well, you got 0 and 1, right? And you got 0 and 1 here. Any power function basic power function, okay? It's going to have the 0 and 1 here as long as it's a positive power, okay? So, these numbers are always going to be the same. Two are the same for any positive power, these two are the same. What's that tell you about the graph? It's going to have the same shape. Somewhat similar. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, let's see what the differences are. Well, what it tells you literally is you have this point and this point. Zero, zero, and one, one, right? So the graphs all go through this, these two points. Okay? Now, what's different? Well, if you had x squared, you wouldn't have 1 16th to 1 32nd, you'd have 1 4th, right? So, and if you had x cubed, you'd have what? For x equals 1 half. It'd be 1 8th, right? One half times one half times one half. Mm -hmm. If we been writing down these tables by memory, instead of thinking through the calculation every time you do, you want to think about how you do things. You want to be thinking about everything that there is to think about. Okay? That's hard to do when your goal is to get that thing done quick. Okay? But as much as we've done these things, if you haven't been thinking about those things, try to train yourself to think about the arithmetic, okay? Think about the definitions. What's going on here? Um, so, you, okay, you have, for x squared, you'd have one-fourth. For x cubed, you'd have one-eighth. 
For x to the fourth, you'd have 1 16th. For x to the fifth, you'd have 1 over 32. Okay? Well, if I just do another graph here. Here's one. Here's one. Okay, all the graphs go through these two points. But the 1 over x squared, I mean the x squared graph, gives you 1 fourth, right? When x equals 1 half, so that's what we want to look at. Um, so here's 1 half. Okay, well, to get to 1 fourth that we need for x squared, we subdivide the interval from 0 to 1. We divide it in half, should have been a little lower than that. And divide that in half, and there's 1 fourth. Okay? It's still a little bit high, but you understand what I'm doing. So that's how we get it. We subdivide the interval, which is what you've seen me do every time I've done one of these graphs, right? Okay? Cut the interval in half, cut that one in half, or whatever. Um, okay, so here's one fourth. Okay, how am I going to get one eighth? About that half. Yeah, divide that in half, right? Half of one fourth is one eighth. And of course, you know, we're going to have to get better with fractions. We're going to be drilling on that a little bit. This is going to become really important. Okay? There's one eighth. So this point is going to be on the graph of the x cubed function. Okay? Okay, when we get to the x to the fourth function, you need one sixteenth. Well, I've got room to divide that, okay? There's 1 16th, so you're going to have a point that's like, well, maybe I better make a different color so you can distinguish the two marks. It's going to be like right here, and it's getting blurred in with this one, right? And then, what are we going to get here? 1 32nd. That's going to be down here real close to the axis. It's going to be like this. Well, this means that your graph of x to the square, x squared, which you know has a vertex here and goes up here like this. To get the graph of x cubed, you're going to have to stay much lower here. Then you're going to have to get a lot steeper to get up to 1. That makes sense? And then for x to the fourth, you're going to have to stay even lower and get even steeper. And for x to the fifth, it's got to do this. Now, I didn't draw those with complete accuracy, but you get the idea. It's important to understand this. Okay? So, here's the x to the fourth and x to the fifth graph. Here's your x squared and x cubed graph. I'll draw it real well. Okay? You need to be able to construct those and understand what's happening. As your powers go up, what happens? You're staying real close to the x-axis from here to here because these numbers, and x is going to be 164th. I can't even attempt to do that with blunt chalk. I'd have to have a fine point marker, okay? And pretty soon, if this axis has any width at all, the point's going to be within the line that I draw to indicate the axis. It won't be right at the center of the line. It's going to get obscured. So it's going to eventually get flat here and then have to turn around somehow and get up here. So it's going to pretty much approach something that stays a straight line almost at the axis here, and then suddenly turns and goes up. Well, we're not going to worry too much about powers over the fifth, but you get the idea. This progression of powers. Okay? And then, of course, you know, what happens to your numbers when you get up to x equals 2? Well, they start with like 16 here, which is going to be here. So this x to the fourth graph is going to have to go through a point up here. Right? 
and the x to the fifth graph is going to have to go through a point that's twice that high. I'll restrain myself and won't show off my vertical leap, but I need it. <laughs> okay. And there's not much left of which I don't think I'll get there. But anyhow, you get the idea, right? Okay. Um, so that's one thing I want you to understand about power functions, and then I'll put your homework, I'll ask you to investigate what happens for x to the negative 2, and x to the negative 3, and x to the negative 4. Okay? Just to get the picture of what the graphs look like, because that's really what gives us a picture of what we're doing in this course. And I'm pretty confident now that if I ask you, because you, 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 you all have learned stuff, um, haven't seen that many tests yet, but I think people are pretty good with fundamental triangles. Okay? Maybe not as good as I really want you to be, because I'm not always seeing an explanation in your homework. We'll see what I see in your tests. Okay? Um, but if I ask you to do a fundamental triangle in the interval 0, 1 half, then 1 half, 1, it's going to reinforce what you're seeing here. Because what are you going to see? Well, the first one's going to get less and less slope. The second one's going to get a greater and greater slope, right? Okay? And a bigger and bigger ratio of the two slopes. So if I ask you to do that for homework, which I probably will, uh, you're not going to have any trouble doing that. Okay? So some of the stuff you've learned is going to help you understand these functions in ways that most per calculus students never understand. Okay? It's important. It's important. Um, and there are some other things that are less important, but we're not funny about that. Um, okay. So we got that idea? That's the scheme of power functions. Now definition. x to the n. Okay? Or y equals x to the p. Where usually if you write x to the n, you're talking about integer powers. You know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. If you're doing x to the p, it could be any power. Okay? But that's why we use n a lot of times and we use p a lot of times. Okay? This is the general. But yeah, I could say n could be any number, any real number. Okay? It'd still be valid. But the context, usually an n means an integer. P means a power. But if you use n and say it's any real number, I'm not going to call it. Okay? It's kind of grammatical. And there's a limit to how much I'm going to pick you about grammar. Okay? Um, okay, so anyhow, that's it. And now you see, at least on the interval from 0 to 1, what the first, well, the second, third, fourth, and fifth powers look like. What do you think? Where do you think the 4.5 power would be? Right in between 4 and 5. Be in between the 4th and 5th power, right? So would be stuck in here somewhere. Maybe in some sense halfway between. It probably wouldn't really be halfway between because things would be not worried about yet. Okay? Got pretty close to halfway between, and if you, if I was to give you or ask you to construct a graph of x to the fourth and x to the fifth, and show me where you think x to the 4.2 would be, and where would x to the 4.8 be, well, you'd probably draw a curve closer to the x to the fourth power for the 4.2, right? And 4.8 being closer to five, you'd probably draw a graph closer to the 
point five pi. It's not hard to understand. Okay. Okay. So we have that, um, and that's something I want you to understand. Okay. So we're gonna do a little bit with that. <clears throat>